Hi everyone. Today's video is going to be a continuation of a series of videos that I've been doing looking at the engineering fundamentals that govern the performance of FPV quads. Today we're going to be focusing on Cinewhoops and in particular ducts. We're going to be looking at the different types of ducted propeller, the advantages of ducts and the drawbacks, how those relate to Cinewhoop performance and we're going to be asking the question are ducts right for your next Cinewhoop build? So let's get into it. But we know ducts aren't used on every build. So let's try and learn a little bit more about them and then figure out exactly when we should use a duct and when we shouldn't. There are two types of ducted propeller. The first is the quart nozzle and the second is the pump jet nozzle. Now starting with the quart nozzle, you can see that the duct is an aerofoil shape and actually that aerofoil shape generates um, some lift and that that lift is actually opposed to the direction of thrust. And this is typically done so that the circulation that's being generated by this aerofoil pushes more air through the duct and therefore provides more thrust. And so we typically see court nozzles used in applications where maximum static thrust is needed. For example, on tugboats or on aircraft that need to hover. In contrast, a pump jet nozzle is uh, very similar, but the aerofoil is orientated in the other direction. You can see there that the uh, lift vector of the aerofoil actually adds to the, the thrust created by the, by the nozzle. And these are typically used in marine applications like jet skis, where um, preventing cavitation with a fast spinning propeller is essential. And these aren't typically used on aircraft because we don't have issues with cavitation. So ducts can provide some real benefits in certain situations. And the key benefits of a ducted fan are additional static thrust that can be generated due to the circulation around the shroud. Uh, that's that court nozzle effect that provides additional thrust at low speeds. Second benefit is that a duct can actually prevent the formation of tip vortices at the end of the propeller blades. And this can actually provide a big benefit to efficiency in certain situations. A third benefit of ducts is that at high speeds, a duct ensures that air is ingested at a constant rate, independent of the aircraft's airspeed. And this is particularly critical at higher speeds, greater than 0.6 Mach. And this is the main reason why you see turbofan engines on airliners, they're all ducted. And that's to really help improve the inlet conditions at high speed. This particular benefit isn't really relevant for us because none of our quadcopters go fast enough that um, our inlet air is exceeding 0.6 Mach. So let's talk a little bit about tip vortices. Now wingtip vortices are caused by air spilling around the tip of an aerofoil. The way an aerofoil generates lift, the way a propeller generates lift, is it creates a high pressure region under the blade and a low pressure region on top of the blade. And that difference in pressure creates lift, creates thrust. But if you have a high pressure region next to a low pressure region, air will want to spill around the tip of the blade to equalize that pressure. So we see that air swirls around from the high pressure region under the aerofoil to the low pressure region on top. And then because of the conservation of angular momentum, it keeps swirling and it forms a wingtip vortex. And you can see here an airline has flown through some clouds and you can really clearly see the wingtip vortices that have come off the tips of both wings and uh, they make a nice smiley face. But wingtip vortices aren't a good thing for aeroplanes or for propellers because they create drag. The wingtip vortex changes the direction of flow of the air moving over the wing close to the wingtip. So close to the wingtip, the wingtip vortex actually causes the air to be pushed downwards. And this has the effect of increasing the effective angle of attack of the aerofoil. And this increases drag. So you can see here that without the vortex, the lift vector of the aerofoil is orientated vertically upwards. But when we include the effect of the wingtip vortex, which causes the air to swoop downward like this, it actually rotates the lift vector slightly. 
and it rotates it backwards. And you see that component is created and that component is vortex drag. And that drag is just being created, it's not doing anything useful and, uh, and it's causing inefficiency of the propeller. If we put a duct in the way, very close to the tip of the propeller, you can see that that wingtip vortex wouldn't actually be able to form because air can no longer easily spill from the underside of the blade to the top of the blade because the duct is in the way. And by this method, we can actually eliminate, um, eliminate the vortex drag. But even if we don't have a duct, there are still ways that we can reduce tip vortices on our propellers. If you have an unducted prop, you can reduce the blade loading at the wingtip by tapering the cord. And this reduces the pressure difference above and below the aerofoil close to the tip. And that means the vortex is weaker because there's less force pushing the air to swirl around the tip of the blade. There's another thing you can do to reduce vortex drag, and that is you can add a winglet at the tip of the aerofoil. Now what the winglet does is take advantage of an effect, another effect of the wingtip vortex. A second effect of the wingtip vortex is to cause air to flow towards the root of the aerofoil. And you can see here in this diagram that the vortex changes the direction of this airstream as it goes along the, the edge of the propeller and causes it to flow towards the root of the propeller. And you can actually take advantage of that change in direction. You can put a little wingtip there and create some lift. And because of the change in direction, that lift is actually ends up orientated slightly forward. So you can see here with a vertical wingtip, without any vortex, without any wingtip vortex, the lift vector would be orientated directly sideways and wouldn't generate any thrust. But when we add in the effect of the wingtip vortex, the lift vector is again changing its angle, but this time it's changing its angle forwards. And so that change in angle forwards means that we actually generate some vortex thrust here. And this vortex thrust helps offset the vortex drag and increases the efficiency of the propeller. If we want to make a duct that really does eliminate wingtip vortices, we have to meet some requirements. And the key, key requirement is that tip clearance is really, really small. So this is a graph of thrust coefficient against rotor speed. And it's to show the benefit of eliminating wingtip vortices by using a duct. There are four lines on this graph, and these four lines represent different amounts of tip clearance. And tip clearance here is defined as a percentage of the blade height. And here I've uh, marked what the blade height is defined as. And for a five inch quadcopter blade, the blade height would only be, you know, five, maybe six millimeters in most cases. So the blade height is already quite small. And you can see that even with a 5% gap, we've already lost all of the benefit of the duct. And 5% of five or six millimeters is only about 250 microns. So realistically, it's going to be extremely difficult to achieve a tip clearance of a quarter of a millimeter on a, uh, on a Cinewhoop duct, particularly if it's 3D printed out of TPU. And the reason why you need this really tight tip clearance is because it turns out a tip vortex is able to form in even a really tiny gap. Another requirement for getting the most benefit from a duct is using the right blade profile. Now ducted fans typically have blades with an equal cord length all the way out to the tip. So this graph shows the aerofoil section for a typical ducted fan and you can see that all of the profiles all the way from close to the root all the way out to the tip are about the same cord length. And this is to maintain the blade loading, the amount of lift being generated at each point along the blade to make sure that you get the most benefit from the duct because you want to keep that loading constant all the way out to the tip because you don't need to worry about a tip vortex. So typical open propellers have a tapered cord to reduce blade tip loading and therefore vortex generation. But a ducted fan 
has an equal cord all the way out because it doesn't have to worry about a tip vortex and it wants to take advantage of that duct and generate the maximum amount of thrust possible. Now, if you're using a tapered propeller inside a duct, which is typical for a Cinewoop, you will actually find that that type of propeller will see less benefit from a duct anyway because it's already doing things to reduce blade loading towards the tip and therefore you're not going to get as much benefit from the duct. And what this means is that Cinewoops are fans in ducts. They're not ducted fans. They don't meet these requirements. Typically, the distance between the blade tip and the duct is very much larger than what would be required to gain any benefit in terms of efficiency or thrust. I mean, you can see that here, that that gap is way more than a quarter of a millimeter. And they also typically use standard propellers with a tapered cord. And these types of propellers are not the right type of propeller to get the maximum benefit from a duct. You would really want something that was very, very bullnosed. But that is not to say that the ducts on Cinewoops don't provide some really interesting benefits. And we're going to go and talk about that now. I think Cinewoop pilots like ducts because of the way they respond in side slip conditions. Now an open propeller can side slip through the air and I'm showing this here. If we've got air being incident on the propeller with a velocity from left to right here, even after it's passed through the propeller, that velocity left to right is unchanged. That propeller is just sliding through the air horizontally while it's generating thrust vertically. If we now compare that to a duct, a duct eliminates that horizontal airspeed. The direction of the flow coming out of the duct must be vertical because of the walls. And that means that all of this horizontal airspeed that the air had going in has to be eliminated. And that creates duct drag. And this duct drag is really important. Typically, the duct drag in side slip can be really a lot greater than the aerodynamic drag of the quadcopter. The volume of air moving through the ducts is so much greater than the volume of air swept by the frontal area of the quad that actually the response of the Cinewoop becomes completely dominated by duct drag. To give you an example of how important this effect is, Let's assume a situation here where we have a Cinewoop moving forward at two meters a second, which is about four and a half miles an hour, and it's pitched forward in angle mode. So maybe you're following someone just walking along. Now let's say the pilot suddenly releases the pitch forward, and because the quad is in angle mode, the quad immediately levels out. Now how much duct drag do the ducts create in this situation and then let's compare that amount of duct drag to the aerodynamic drag of the quadcopter without the ducts. To calculate the amount of duct drag that's being generated by the Cinewoop in this condition, we need to know the mass of air that's passing through the ducts each second. And we're going to calculate that by first looking at the inflow velocity. Now, in a hover, a 600 gram Cinewoop with three inch props has an inflow velocity to the props of about 17 meters a second. And we calculate that using this equation here, which I derived in another video. I'll link it down in the video description. It's a video where I talk about uh, how to choose props for different quadcopters. So if we know that inflow velocity and we know the density of the air, we can work out the mass of air that's being ingested. And it's about 352 grams of air per second that's passing through those ducts. If we know the mass of air ingested by the ducts per second, and we know the forward component of that velocity, we said it was two meters a second because that's how fast the Cinewoop is moving, then we can calculate the duct drag as 0.704 newtons. But how does that compare to the aerodynamic drag? Now for the aerodynamic drag, let's assume that the Cinewoop is a rectangular bluff body. So we're going to include the frontal area of the ducts here. And we're saying that the frontal area of the Cinewoop is approximately 230 millimeters by 30 millimeters. We can assume a drag coefficient of one for a bluff body. And that gives us an aerodynamic drag of 0.0166 newtons. 
So in this example, the duct drag is 42 times greater than the aerodynamic drag. The duct drag is completely dominant. It's controlling the response of the Cinewhoop in the air. And this will make the Cinewhoop behave really differently to an equivalent open prop quad. This effect means that Cinewhoops feel like they have so little momentum. The moment that you stop pitching forward or sideways with a ducted Cinewhoop, it's going to immediately slow down very, very quickly. And this makes precise control of position really easy because you can change that angle just a little bit and suddenly you're slowing down a lot or suddenly you're speeding up more. And this makes tracking of slower moving subjects much, much easier. Because if you want to slow down, if you're tracking a long border like in this amazing video, um, definitely go and watch that by the way. I'll put a link to it down in the video description as well. If you want to track that object and you're getting too close to it, you just need to pitch back a little bit and that duct drag is going to slow you down immediately and then you're going to avoid overrunning the subject or overshooting the subject. Precisely framed shots are going to be easier to capture therefore. It's going to be much easier to do that proximity flying that Cinewhoops are really known for and are really excellent at. I just want to make it clear that prop guards are not going to have the same effect as ducts because they don't change the air direction that's flowing past the propeller blades in anything like the same way. Prop guards aren't going to generate duct drag and therefore a drone with prop guards is not going to feel the same as one with ducts. It's not going to have that massive drag the moment you pitch back. It's not going to slow down and let you keep that subject in view. This analysis allows us to make a couple of recommendations. If you're looking to do close proximity work, you're looking to track subjects that are moving slowly, you keep them in frame, um, capturing that uh, Cinewhoop style footage, a ducted quad is definitely going to be the way you want to go. It's going to be right for you and it's going to give you a flight feel that you're just not going to be able to get from an open prop quad. However, if you're looking to do more acrobatic work, you're looking to capture footage where the momentum or the fling of the quad is important. And you're not so interested in close proximity flying or tracking of slower moving subjects. Then you're going to be better off with an open propped quad. And if you're worried about uh, props getting caught, prop guards are a great solution for that. I hope that now you feel like you know a little bit more about how ducts work, what effect they have, and whether they're right for your next FPV build. If you like this video, please check out my channel. I've got some videos to help you pick the best motor and prop combination for your next build. And I've also done some resonance analyses of different frames to show you how they vibrate in the air and how we can make our quads fly even better. The most recent one is the FPV Cycle Glide, so I'll, uh, I'll link that in the video description so you can check that out. I'm also excited to tell you that I've been working on my own frame design and uh, launch video for that's going to be going up in a week or two and you'll be able to buy it if you're interested. So uh, stay tuned, get subscribed so you don't miss that. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very happy flying.